Did you see the syllabus for the Yes, course? I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> and these are, this is the product, is it? This or is the, the product. <laughs> and we are right. very, very proud of, uh, proud of them. We're proud okay. of you too for looking at the syllabus. <laughs> and you probably already read all the books on it. Uh, <laughs> you, you weren't told about the quiz. No, it won't. <laughs> I'm one of these people who can't do quizzes. Actually. We we have thing called in Britain called pub quizzes. You know, in the pubs we go and honestly, if I'm ever in any of those, my mind goes blank. They say, like when I was even when I was in office, who's the prime minister? And your mind just goes blank. Should liberal democracies seek to promote the creation or adoption of their form of government abroad? Uh, what tools do they possess that they could employ in this process, and which of these tools do you feel is most effective? Yes, is, is, is my view, uh, and the more time I, sp I spend a lot of time out in the Middle East uh, with the Israel-Palestine issue, but also more broadly in, in the area, and I actually think the only stability that, that, that will be in that region is when there is um, liberal democracy. What methods can you employ? Um, well, I think... The, the, there's a path of evolution that countries can take. I mean, I don't think, in other words, we shouldn't just kind of leave it up to them. Now, sometimes, you know, as with Iraq, we intervened, or Afghanistan, we intervened in a particular way um, and used military force. But let's sort of, those are exceptional, as it were. More generally, I think what is important is to try and partner the modernizing and moderate elements within those countries to engage in a process of evolution. I, I think that uh, the measure of human being is how they deal with failure. Uh -huh. And so I want to uh -huh. know, um, without any political, moral, or ethical pretensions, what you would think is your greatest failure. Ah. Now, I always think that's for me to know and you to try and guess. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, um, I mean, you're about to tell me what you think, uh, but um, <laughs> it could be embarrassing. Um, funnily enough, it's not the most con controversial decisions uh, because you kind of, those you take like Iraq on the basis of what you think is right or wrong and some people agree and some people disagree and so on. Um, I always say that, that I should have been bolder when I could have been in domestic policy actually. So I put through big reforms in healthcare and education and so on and welfare, but I, I would have, if I had my time again, I would have started them earlier and pushed them harder um, and be more radical on that. If you try to do something, you may fail, but it's better to try. As a prominent and influential international leader, what is your view you. on... <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your view on climate change and the Green Revolution? Uh, I'm in favor of the Green Revolution, um, and I'm against climate change. Um, <laughs> um, my view is that, that, that uh, this, this will happen. Uh, it's an incredibly exciting area, but we need an international agreement to set a framework that accelerates the process. And I think there are reasons of energy security every, much as, every bit as much as the environment for going in the low carbon way. So uh, I'm basically... You know, I, I support it. Part of the work I do is actually in the climate change field, um, and and I just think, I, I think, this is this is an idea whose time has come. How long it takes is is, is another matter, um, and there is something of a race against time. But we need the international agreement, and particularly we need China and America on the same side. So, what do you think of the opportunity to meet such a prominent international leader, and um, what were some of like the feelings that you've taken away from this experience? Um, I was incredibly floored. My class, Liberal Democracy and Its Limits, uh, I took because I thought it was interesting. And on the first day of class, we found out that we were going to have this incredible opportunity with Mr. Blair. And um, I was just felt incredibly excited that I had chosen a university that was going to give me the opportunity to sit literally two feet from the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, um, ask him a question and, and get a real answer where he looked me in the eye and actually um, answered my question directly. He was so likable, but at the same time, he was likable because he was knowledgeable and because he was earnest. So I think that, you know, Tony Blair seemed like a great guy and he definitely challenged maybe my initial perceptions of someone like him.